Now, ladies and gentlemen, moving ahead with the next session. Our next session is uh, with Mr. Bimal Reba. Uh, his passion for cultures, languages, and making information accessible led him to kickstart Trell as COO and co-founder. Since the age of 18, he has been a part of the Telugu film industry, taking up both uh, the roles of cast and crew during his uh, due to his passion for content, be it films, TV shows, and now on the move content. Along with content, he shares the love for data, being a gold medalist in ECE engineering from JNTU. He will now join us and present on tapping into the video and vernacular social content to scale up your uh, businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Bimal Reba. COO and uh, co-founder for Trell. Thanks, Shobha, for the kind introduction. Uh, since uh, we have 10 minutes uh, on the clock, it's, it's a very interesting subject uh, where uh, we uh, together here at the organization are what we are building from the past three years and how we look at, uh, you know, commerce, e-commerce e evolving in the next, uh, you know, three to five years. Uh, but without much uh, delay, let me quickly share some screens if that's possible and then take you through what we are building. So just quick introduction about Trell. Uh, we are a video commerce platform. We are an influencer-led e-commerce platform where um, users on the platform discover content under various lifestyle categories such as beauty, fashion, home decor, DIY uh, in more than 10 languages. That means uh, most of the users have access to this content interest categories in their own language, but most importantly in a mobile first format and uh, in a very snackable uh, format which is uh, not uh, beyond two minutes on the platform. Uh, users also get an ability to discover products and services through this content from their uh, favorite influencers and are able to purchase these products and services from the video within itself with a single click of a button. Now this is where we envision um, e-commerce e evolving into as one of its key wings where it, it enables people to quickly uh, not only discover products in their own language, uh, but also educate themselves in terms of how to use that product from the influencers, trust them because they see the influencers using it on themselves and also buy them through a very simplistic user interface. So that's what we call a social commerce platform. But most importantly, we're going a bit uh, wider here where I want to talk about how, you know, uh, you brands of tomorrow and today can leverage both video and vernacular and social uh, content to scale up and penetrate deeper into the markets. So just to talk about why it is very important as we, uh, you know, this is one of the key surveys that was done by Bain. If you look at, uh, you know, the entire landscape of India, even though there are 800 uh, million odd internet users, you would see the bottom funnel uh, uh, so the number of users who are actually shopping online being only 170 million. That means uh, there's a huge drop off between people, number of users who are actually online and the number of users who are actually shopping. Uh, now, when we uh, went with this survey and also did our own internal survey, we understood that one of the key uh, factors of why it's not happening is people are not able to trust or are not able to find the relevant products and most importantly, understand the usage of these products where they're coming online to purchase. Now, because of this sole reason, we are actually seeing this gap not reducing and thereby we need video and vernacular to ensure that uh, e-commerce experience becomes more in inclusive and diversive as, that, uh, diversive as we move, move forward. But who are these users and why does it make, why is it very important for us? If you look at it, right, uh, this is one of uh, very personalized way of understanding how e-commerce is uh, divided, uh, Indian users are divided when it comes to mobile infrastructure in India. So we call it an India 1, India 2, India 3. Um, so India 1 is a highly monetizable base, which is already existing, which we call the first 50 million who are accustomed to how to purchase online. But what is most important is to understand that India 2 is now upcoming and they are ready to buy online. But if you see the size of this India 2 as a market, it is in terms of volume itself, uh, when it comes to number of people, it is four times, that is you have 210 million users uh, with an uh, average per capita income of $1,400 and above. And if you see the total spending power is twice as that of India One. That means 
by simply tapping into spaces such as video vernacular and making it more relatable and localizing you are able to tap into a market that is twice in terms of uh, spending power <clears throat> now the other important aspect to it is if you also look into it uh, not only these users are coming online but the internet penetration or ad uh, adoption is still low that means the potential uh, for the future growth is also immense if you look at some of the key markets where we also focus upon like the uh, ttmk markets or bengal markets the penetration is still around 19 uh, 18 to 21% that means uh, there's a immense scope of growth but at the same time if you look at the users who are already online uh, is also huge that means if you look at people today consuming content there are 500 million users who actually watch um, video content in vernacular la languages in india at least once uh, on a monthly uh, basis uh, but if you look at the number of shoppers is again 170 million so that's the kind of a divide between people consuming content and people purchasing online so that is where video and vernacular would help brands uh, to leverage and reach out to this audiences so now uh, uh, as i talked about uh, one of the key stats is uh, if you look at 18 plus indians that, uh, who watch video content online this uh, 325 million that means every two out of three people who are online today watch video content now that's the size of the market and uh, this is the summary of what i have been talking about out of the 750 odd million uh, only 110 are shopping but if you look at uh, 450 are using social and 500 million people are actually watching a video online that means um, by having these two levers you would ensure that the brand is reaching out to uh, 5x more audience base that you're currently reaching out to now as we move forward and you know double tap on it beyond video and vernacular uh, though it helps for the reach yeah, the what are the what are the users uh, what are these users uh, actually looking forward to right if you look at them we see that uh, they have a very limited purchase uh, clarity that means they do not know what they are looking for by being in their own language you're not only able to address to them but you're also able to create relatable and educational content to them right uh second is they have very high uh experimentative in nature that means they want to try multiple brands they are open to try out new brands if they have access uh, provided they have access to that i mean one of the key uh, evidences that we have from our platform itself is when we talk about categories such as beauty and personal care tier uh, to market or india to market for us actually they have higher average order value that is uh 20% more than tier one audiences and secondly they have more frequency of purchases that in a year they at least come back 1.5 times more than tier one um, or india one audiences to purchase these brands and most importantly they have been highly experimentative if there's a new brand or a new product or a service that they see which is not available in the local markets they are happy to spend uh, that additional rupee to buy them and try it out uh, but having said that they are sometimes uh, uh, price conscious uh that means uh customizing your services and products at, to those markets localizing and having at the right price point made a uh, great uh uh yeah, top line addition to some of the brands that we have worked on trial as a platform and just to, since i've talked uh, a, a bit of a macro as a picture but let me also give you an anecdotal evidence in terms of how it actually happened on the platform as well to uh if we talk about one of the key uh, you know learnings this is one of the case studies which actually opened up our minds when we uh, were trying to build this platform is we had this user uh, with an uh, she goes by the name of anvesha and she was uh, newly wed and from a tier 2 city in west bengal she never purchased uh, a beauty and a personal care product online before coming on trail as a platform she always used to make purchases in the local store uh the reason was she never understood how to use product but what happens is when she's on trail she actually discovers <coughs> a, a influencer on the platform with the name of anushka azra she watches her content and uh, and she understands that she has a similar skin tonality uh, similar uh, problem statements when it comes to skin care and uh, she actively looks at all the videos that anushka posts on the platform and then what we see is in the next span of 6 months totally she gets introduced and educated about beauty and personal care as a space 
but she was able to purchase 38 products within the span of six months. And every time she uh, came onto the platform, she at least purchased with an average order value of 850. Now that's, that's the power of diversification for you, right? By simply being in the own language, localizing for the tastes and using video and influencer, uh, these brands were able to better communicate the proposition to the end user and then also make uh, sale upwards worth of 850 every time um, Anvisha used to find anything relatable. Now, this is just one story, and but this story um, would become the household story going forward for India to markets for all the languages uh, uh, across India. Uh, we, similar was uh, what we've seen with other brands that have leveraged uh, such kind of uh, you know case studies to their benefits. Uh, where they've integrated strong content, strong narrative, strong storytelling with certain influencers and in certain languages uh, with a razor sharp focus in terms of making relatable content. And uh, they've seen tremendous results just by one video, like some brands uh, have sold close to 1000 plus products uh, through just one video by ensuring that they were creating relatable content to the end user. Now, uh, the next decade, uh, as we speak about, um, it, even decade is too long term for us because even today, as we see, the uh, barrier to entry has become uh, substantially lower when it comes to uh, creating new brands online, right? So that means uh, most of the D2C brands, uh, which are not existing, uh, uh, you, you know, three, four months back today are commanding a substantial chunk of market share by only solely creating products that people love the most. And this is going to only uh, accelerate, but that means by 2025, you would have close to 6,000 to 7,000 D2C brands only in few categories propping up where they'll be creating this niche solutions. That means the competition is going to be a uh, very, uh, it's going to be a highly competitive environment. So that means not only launching uh, products would be important, but scaling would be very important for most of these brands in a very competitive environment. So that's why <clears throat> what we see is, you know, uh, whenever someone uh, focuses upon, um, you know, ensuring that they're using video and vernacular and creating relative, uh, re relatable content, but doing this on a day-to-day -day basis by engaging with influencers, that is not only doing it while it comes up to uh, new product launches, but doing it on a day-to-day -day basis to stay relevant to the end user and educating the end user in terms of that particular category makes them uh, you know to acquire users at a lower cost and also keep them loyal uh, to their uh, 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 you know uh, loyal customers across across the growth journeys right uh, this becomes very important during scaling stages and uh, that's why i think one of the uh, key things as we see uh, d2c is highly important uh, because even the omnichannel brands uh, uh, as of today, as we speak to them, but due to the pandemic in the last uh, two years, digital has become a key strategy for even the offline brands as we speak, whether it comes to fashion or beauty, personal care, whatever segments that you know, they thought uh, they, they were happy with just being offline, now are started moving uh, digital first or be making digital as the key uh, channel. But if you see uh, one of the, uh, the three key pillars, uh, our marketplace distribution, that means having multiple platforms, uh, making your brand ubiquitous uh, for uh, customers whenever they want to shop. Social shopping, that means building networks. Wherever you are present, ensure that as a brand, you are garnering followership on that particular platform because this as a currency will only compound. Uh, it will help you to have direct channels of communication with your fans and customers on a day-to-day -day basis. And most importantly, visual video and vernacular, which we touched upon today. These will be three key uh, uh, for the brands as they move forward to. And uh, just to summarize in terms of what I talked about, every time uh, a brand should uh, is there catering to India market, ensure that you're focusing on inclusivity and diversity, uh, diversity by ensuring that you create localized and relatable content in all languages in the markets that you're present in. Uh, unless until you do not do this, you will not cater to their taste and uh, you will you will not be relatable to the end consumers. You've got to have a very uh, tight control over supply chain and inventory management, but at the same time, you've got to have very sharp pricing strategies. Uh, it's uh, one shot fits all will not 
work going forward in this digital first environment you need to have different product offerings different service offerings and different at different price uh, sensitiveness for different markets by only which you could become a, a, a market leader or one or two in those specific markets and uh, obviously you need to have a very uh, good relationship with marketplaces whenever you are trying to have your uh, digital first strategy adopted so these are some of the key things uh, and just before i end this uh, <coughs> uh i just talk about how this journey happens on trail as as i briefly touched upon this is how trail's journey also looks like as i briefly touched upon while i begin with you can actually as a brand come get your get yourself listed on the platform through influencer get educational content created around your products in more than 12 languages on the platform where users will not only be able to see the educational content if they like what they see they can quickly add that particular product to the cart see the reviews if they want to again in in their own languages through multiple influencers uh, and then buy from the video within itself so this is how the future of shopping would look like it's very inclusive diverse and it's the most fun way to shop and uh, this is where social commerce comes in and this is how most of the brands should look uh, to addressing this young population who's coming online more specifically in lifestyle cat categories or consumption upgrade categories so that brings an uh uh this session to one and um, happy to answer any queries if you have so thank you so much bimal for taking that session in such a short span of time and explaining us the importance of the vernacular uh, uh, you know languages and and the local languages and the influencers and the other aspects of digital advertising and uh, how it's going to look like for brands thank you so much for joining us